Hello guys and welcome once again to AB's Radiography Hub, right? Um, first, first and foremost, I would want to take this opportunity to thank every single one of you who has supported us thus far for like the past um, um, two days since we set up this channel. The support has been massive. I see all your subscriptions, your um, likes and comments. It's much, much, much appreciated. Right. That being said, we, today we're going to talk about an introduction into radiography now i know this piece of lecture might not be targeted at some of you who are not in your first years but still it's uh, no knowledge is wasted right i know most of you must have been expecting me to dive straight into um your courses and stuff but i felt like it was important for us to for us to talk about the introduction to radiography right and um, try to give a bit of um orientation to the first year students right who might be getting into the course so whether you're here by choice or you're here by chance right um i feel like this video is very very important to give you some sort of orientation as to what radiography is all about uh if you i don't know if you take a survey and you ask people around what radiography is all about um most people would um misconstrue the, the meanings right most people don't even know what radiography is about most people feel that radiography is all about taking x-rays but it's a lot more than that hence i felt like we felt like it was important for us to make this video right so without further ado let's dive in all right guys today we'll be talking about a couple of things mainly just three um we've got just three table of con just three contents here we would like to talk about so the first thing is we're just going to break down a brief history of um, radiography and talking about that we would discuss uh, just briefly nothing um, elaborate really we'll talk about the discovery of x-ray now the reasons why we would be talking about um, some of these things is because um, the discovery of these things will serve later serve as a bedrock to um, most of the uh, modalities that we have today, like um, the discovery of X-rays. Uh, today we use X-rays for CT, for conventional radiography as well. Invention of fluoroscopy, of course. Today we use fluoroscopy, and 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 another thing there is that um, most of these histories are very and interesting. And of course, it's going to help you as a general knowledge of radiography. And of course, we'll talk about the branches of radiography. Like I said before, radiography is not just limited to playing to the x-ray images that you see every day there's a lot more um, that goes into radiography as a whole and then lastly we will talk about the importance of radiography because radiography is very very important in healthcare i can't i can't even um, begin to overemphasize the importance of radiography it's that important right so um yeah, so that's what we're going to talk about today. So let's dive in. First of all, we'll talk about let's let's dive into the brief uh, discovery of X-rays. Then, all right. So X-rays. As some of us would know, um, was discovered in um, nineteen sorry in eighteen ninety six by of course you would know him if you're not in your first year if you're in your second year probably in your third year or you've attended any World Radiography Day of some sort you would know the name Wilhelm Conrad Renken right Wilhelm Conrad Renken now the Renken is uh, it's a bit of um, I had a bit of um, struggle trying to. I used to pronounce it as Rengen. You get me. So Rengen is actually a German word, and that's why it is pronounced like that. So you've got um, Wilhelm Conrad Rengen right there. So that was the man who founded. Sorry, who discovered the um, the X-rays? Now I want to point out something real quick. When people say that 
um, the x-rays or the x-ray was uh, invented and that's a very very wrong and absurd thing to say the x-rays were not invented the, an x-ray or the x-ray is um, is a naturally occurring phenomenon is a naturally occurring ray that ha happens or that's produced in, under some certain conditions so i'm just going to give you a brief story of how he came about this discovery now formerly there was this um experiment going on with what you would call the crooks tube back then you can also call it the cathode ray tube right they were experimenting with the cathode ray tube trying to find um well the the whole the whole premise of the um experiment was to find out ways to produce electricity so the experiment was centered around electricity at that time now at that time suffice to say that at that time x-rays were being produced as well now here's the plot twist nobody nobody knew that x-rays were being emitted you get what i'm saying nobody knew that x-rays were being emitted the whole premise of the cathode ray tube was to experiment with electricity and uh if you look at the cathode ray tube you would um if you i would urge you to to read more about that i would not want to um, involve that in this video just so so the video doesn't get a, a bit um, a lot longer so the cathode ray tube was a device that when you apply the potential difference to both ends right if you don't know what a potential difference is don't worry when you do it in your first um in your first course the first radiographic course and that should be radiation physics one you would understand what a potential potential difference is but essentially speaking the potential difference is like um applying a positive um, charge to one side of the tube and applying negative charge to the other side of the tube so that um, you would have um, a a flow of electrons from one end to the other end now when the electrons flow from one end to the other end at a very high velocity like um, like so i'm just going to draw that out um, here so essentially this is what um a cathode ray tube would look like um <laughs> I'm sorry for the way I drew it. I'm not just a very good um, artist. So this is essentially what it would look like. So what, what went on in here was that there was a p potential difference applied between the two ends. This part of the tube was more or less a fluorescent screen. So what happened was that because of the potential difference applied between both sides, the um, the electrons produced here by some sort of um, um, filament right, would accelerate across the tube and then strike the um, fluorescent screen emitting a light you get me so it will strike it and then light will be emitted so the scientists of that time they would um, experiment and keep experimenting with this um, experiment and they would um, try to see how they could apply this to uh, to, to everyday life you get me so some of them were of the um opinion that probably this could be used as some sort of light bulb some of them were um, experimenting it to see how they could use it to generate electricity or conduct electricity you get me those, those kind of you know sciencey sciencey stuff so that was what went on nobody had had any idea of if it, it maybe by chance emitted some sort of ray nobody had that idea not until 1895 um, when um, Rinkin um when he carried out he carried out a specific experiment and for some reason i don't know why he did it for some reason when he carried out this experiment he would take a thick um, box right something like that he would take a thick box and then surround the um cathode ray tube so that thing i drew earlier i just made he used this to sort of like represent it so don't get confused this is still our cathode, cathode ray tube our crooks tube so those are the basically the um, two names they would call it back then so for some reason Rankin, this is Rankin, please this is Rankin. so Rankin, for some reason would surround this assembly the cathode ray tube right with some sort of thick box and when he initiated some, um, when he initiated the exposure when he turned the tube on he noticed something very very strange right he noticed something strange now what did he notice he noticed that a fluorescent screen from distance away started to emit white light and you know 
I don't know if I said it before, but fluorescence it's, it's the process of um, emission of light by maybe some sort of material. You get me? So if something, if I say it's a fluorescent screen, it means that it's a screen that's capable of emitting light, right? So he surrounded this um, this assembly, this uh, cathode ray tube, with this box here. And then he noticed that some distance away, um, an intensifying screen would emit light when he turned this this um, this thing on, this cathode ray tube on. So I started thinking, basically, you get me? He started thinking, and that, and that, and that led him to um, begin to understand and begin to realize that there were some radiations that were um, emitted by the X-ray um, tube, the cathode ray tube, sorry. <laughs> at, that time, at, at, at that time, it was not called the... Um, cathode ray tube and um, the x-ray tube it was called the cathode ray tube at that time so he then began to um think and notice that there were some radiations that were not electrons you get me there were some other radiations that were emitted by this cathode ray tube you get me now he noticed then that since these radiations could penetrate this box you get me? Since these radiations could penetrate this box and strike um, an intensifying screen and thereby cause fluorescence of our screen, he then concluded that these radiations were of a very, very short wavelength. And I'm just going to pitch this right in here that the reason we're able to see light is because visible light is, um, is an electromagnetic radiation that exists in a wavelength that our eyes can see. You get me? So anything shorter than visible light, we would not be able to see it. And so that made William Conrad, Wilhelm Conrad Röntgen, to conclude that this, um, these radiations were of a shorter um, wavelength. And they could pass through some materials, you get me? They, they could pass through some materials, and the only way for us to be able to witness and to see the presence of these um, radiations was, was through an intensifying screen. So essentially, the intensifying screens, sorry, <laughs> I said intensifying screen, the fluorescent screens were, were a way for us to be able to capture and um, notice the presence of these radiations. But here, here's the thing, William, William, William Röntgen, Rankin, sorry, I keep calling you Rankin. William Rankin did not know what this specific kind of radiations were. You get me? And you know, in, in math class, where they would, um, when you would have variables, maybe you're solving an equation and you're having variables, uh, uh, most of the times there's a letter that they would use to represent a variable that is unknown. You get me? And that letter is X. So most of the times they would say, find X. What is the value of X? Do you get me? And that was the basis of which Rankin named the X-ray. So he called them X-rays. Rays that he did not know. He didn't know how to name them. He didn't know their names. He didn't know what they were. Do you get me? So he named them X-rays. And that is how X-rays were um were formed, were, were discovered, not formed, sorry, that's a very wrong English. If you see somebody saying x-rays were formed by Rankin or x-rays were invented by Rankin. I found a tear in the mouth, modulate them, sabotage the mouth, a bezel it in the That's not true, right? It was, it was discovered. Now, since these unknown rays called x-rays could pass through um, cardboard, thick cardboard materials, Rankin thought, and he was right, he thought that probably these, these um, rays could have the ability to penetrate some other materials. You get me? It could penetrate some other materials. And so that led him to use the x-rays on his wife. Do you get me? So the first, the first um, x-ray image that was, was produced in history was a radiograph of Wilhelm Redkin's wife's hand and when she's of course <laughs> funny story she saw she saw her hands she saw her, her hand and her bones on the uh, on the radiograph and then she said the famous words I have seen my own death so if you search if you if you search that word I have seen my own death on um, Google or something you would it will lead you straight to the uh, discovery of x-rays because that was the whole thing that happened 
there. And this, I think this happened on December 22nd, 19, on the same 1895. So that was the first ever, um, that was the first ever um, um, radiograph to be recorded in history, right? It was a radiograph of Wilhelm Rentkin's wife's hand. So this radiograph of his wife's hand made him to realize that um, x-rays, though they could pass through some materials, they were unable to pass through some other materials as well, such as bones and metals, right? Because on the radiograph, his wife's ring was there as well. So yeah, bones and metals. But then it turns out that Rankin was not the only person who um, discovered the x-rays. I think later on, um, Thomas was it Thomas Edison, no, it was Nikola Tesla who stated and made a claim that he also um, discovered the um, x rays as well. But then. You're going to explain, Taya. <laughs> You're going to explain, 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 because no evidence. Yep, that's it. But then, um, for the fact that it was um, Rankin who published his findings, that um, discovery was then attributed and credited to um, Renk Rankin. Now, other people, not just Rankin as well, other people had some sort of contribution into the discovery of X-rays. Not the discovery, and more like the um, the evolution of X-rays. Where um, the first person was um, home. Homer Clive Snook, who developed the transformers that were used for X-ray production. Th that was one um, notable person who um, um, produced these transformers that are used for X-ray production. Another notable person, or another notable name in the evolution of X-rays is the famous William Coolidge. Now, um, I said before that the X-rays X -ray were produced formerly by um, the cathode ray tube, but then there was there was a problem. There was a problem that was encountered. The method by which these tubes produced X-rays was by ionization of the air, because the tubes now these tubes were were sealed, but then there were some 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 bit of air molecules inside of the tube. So when the electrons would migrate from the from the cathode to the anode it would lead to ionization of these um, air molecules inside of the tube and hence that was how x-rays were produced back then. Now in cases like that what you would um, notice would be that the production of these x-rays would vary based on different amounts of air molecules in each tube, you get me? And as such you would not have a constant um, supply of Electri uh, of um, x-rays you get me you will not have a constant supply of x-rays and as such because of this um inconsistency in x-ray production that led william coolidge to produce another type of tube that is dedicated to x-ray production and that was where you would have um, the production of some this tube the new kind of x-ray tube called the coolidge tube or it was also called the hot cathode tube. It's called the hot cathode tube because um, you would have to heat the cathode of that tube, heat it to um, till it's white hot or red hot. The essence of that was to boil off the electrons from the um, cathode. So that's basically how the electrons were emitted from the um, from the cathode of that tube. And of course, the whole process of extra production goes in and all of that. In early X-ray tubes, the electrons necessary to produce the X-radiation were released by first breaking down a small amount of air or other gas in the partially evacuated tube with high voltage applied between the terminals. Operation depended upon the amount of gas within the tube. And since this was variable, the tube was unreliable. In the present day, a uh, hot cathode X-ray tube, of which this is one of several different types, there is a high vacuum. And the production of electrons 
depends only on the size and temperature of uh, an incandescent tungsten filament with a cup-shaped structure surrounding it. This particular tube has two filaments, either of which may be used. The swarm of electrons, which is liberated or boiled off from the white-hot filament, is speeded up to a very high velocity by high voltage applied between the negative electrode or cathode, which carries the filament, and the positive electrode, or anode, which is called the target. The electron stream is focused to a very small spot on the target by the cup-shaped cathode structure. It seems that the electron stream striking the target at terrific velocity is stopped so violently that the electromagnetic radiation known as X-rays is produced. So that is all for, um, that's all the history that goes into, um, obviously that's not all the details, but just to give you a background of all the history that went into the um, discovery of X-rays. Alright, so the branches of radiography. Like I said before, um, radiography is not just about taking plain x-rays. Radiography is more than that. And as such, we'll be looking at um, branches of radiography. Alright, radiography is mainly composed of four major branches. Now, there might be other branches to radiography, but then these are the four major, when you talk about the major branches, these are the four major branches of radiography. The first one is diagnostic radiography. The um, second one is therapeutic. Third one is interventional. Fourth one is nuclear medicine. All right, so we'll um, look at each of them one after the other. All right, diagnostic radiography is now. If you if you look at the word diagnostic, this is actually most of the um, words we use in maybe medicine or biology. You'd find out that the etymologies of these words etymology means um, root words. The root words of these words are they sometimes date back to either Latin or Greek. So diagnosis, right? Diagnosis, when you break it down, diagnosis is composed of two separate words, dia and gnosis. Gnosis is a word in Greek meaning knowledge and the dia means complete. So when you put them together, that gives you complete knowledge. Do you get me? Now, Diagnostic radiography is the branch of radiography that deals with, that deals with diagnosis. You get me. So it's a, it's a diagnostic radiography is a branch of radiography that involves the use of various forms of radiation to produce high quality images, which aids the diagnosis of disease. So if you are undergoing a radiographic procedure to know the cause of a disease right to find out the cause of a disease maybe a fracture maybe you would find out people that maybe sometimes have headache you get me they would have headache and then maybe they would run a ct scan you get what i'm saying and maybe in the ct scan they would find out that there is a um, hypertrophy of the maybe uh, pituitary gland or maybe there is an intracranial bleeding you get me so the, that procedure the process of wanting to know the cause of an illness is diagnosis and so when you use radiography to do that it's called diagnostic radiography and on that those um on other brands that's where you have your plain x-rays you hear me you would go into um, your x-ray department plain x-rays for maybe detect fracture of the bone or something the um, plain x-rays one you take with the erect bulky and stuff and the uh uh, x-ray tube and stuff um yeah that's one example of um diagnostic radiography another example is your ct scans your mri your um ultrasound ultrasound falls on that diagnostic radiography as well um fluoroscopy as well so that is for diagnostic radiography the next one we'll be talking about then will be therapeutic radiography then again looking at the root word You'd find that therapeutic, anything therapy is pertinent to treatment. So you would have um, physiotherapy. Anything therapy is um, 
that involves treatment. So basically, therapeutic radiography is that branch of radiography that focuses on the planning and delivery of cancer treatment in radiation. So therapeutic radiography mainly focuses on cancer patients. And you would find this branch of radiography in the oncology department of the hospitals. So um, focus on the planning and delivery of cancer, um, delivery of cancer treatment in radiation. Radiotherapy is one of the common ways to treat cancer alongside surgery and chemotherapy and involves applying targeted dose of radiation to kill cancer cells. And just like we saw chemotherapy here is also using chemicals, right? Chemical substances to treat cancer. Do you get me? If you in your I think in your third year. In your third year, you would um, learn about pathologies. Most of the pathologies involving cancer, when you look at the treatment plan, it involves surgery, chemotherapy, and radiation therapy. Yeah, so radiation therapy um, falls under um, therapeutic radiography. All right, that's another branch of radiography. Another branch of radiography then would be interventional radiography. Now, interventional radiography is just basically the use of medical imaging techniques to guide doctors as they diagnose and treat certain problems with blood vessels, lymphatic system through the body. Interventional radiography is also called image-guided radiography. Now, if you watch movies, you would find out that maybe all these... Um, um, medical based movies like maybe The Good Doctor, um, Great Anatomy, in movies like that, you will find out that in your OR, the operating room, you when they, when they would be making some sort of catheterization, catheterization is basically inserting some sort of tube into the um, blood vessels or something like that. You would see that when they're inserting that tube, they're always looking at a big screen, and, that's, and on that screen, you would see what they're doing, you will see the extent to which they um, insert this catheter and stuff. So that whole setting there is a, is a branch of radiography called interventional radiography. So they are basically using um, um, x-rays to look into the patients, you get to guide their um, process of surgery, to guide the extent to which they insert the catheter, you know, those, those kind of basic stuff. So that is interventional radiography. That's another branch of radiography. The fourth branch of radiography then would be nuclear medicine. Now, the concept of radi um, radioactivity is what birthed forth um, nuclear medicine. You know that radioactivity is basically um, disintegration of um, a big kind of radionuclei. Yeah. So that, that's just plainly what radioactivity is. Now, nuclear medicine is a, is a specialized area of radiology that uses small amounts of uh, materials to examine organ function. So what happens here is that maybe the doctor will insert, will inject you intravenously with some sort of radionuclear. So they would um, in, or they would inject a a small amount of radionuclide tracer into the bloodstream, and then these um in very 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 small amounts really be used to image inside of the body. So, and another thing to notice about nuclear medicine is that while diagnostic um, radiography basically captures the structure. And it, what you can see, nuclear medicine captures the metabolism of the body and the function. So, um, nuclear medicine is almost like radio, um, diagnostic radiography, but then it's just based on functions and metabolism. And, and this is where you would have your PET scans and um, your PET CT and stuff like that. So, those are the four major branches of radiography. There might be other minor branches like um, sonography and um, maybe industrial radiography, but these are the major, major four branches of radiography, right? So moving on then, I think our last um, item on the table of contents would be the importance of radiography. Now, radiography is something, is a, is a, is a profession that cannot and never be overemphasized. You cannot do without the profession. There is a reason why it's called the eye of modern medicine. You get me? Radiography is... Um, if you if you if you if you've been in a hospital setting for a long time or if you've watched like I said if you've watched these medical shows, you'd find out that when the patient comes into the hospital, the first thing they would do is maybe take an X-ray or have a CT done. You get me or do an MRI. So that radiography is like the forefront of diagnosis. 
Okay, so the role of radiography in health sector cannot be overemphasized. Now, what importance of um, um, radiography is early detection. There's, there's an there's an image modality called mammography. Mammography is um, is on our diagnostic radiography imaging the breast you get what i'm saying it images the breast now in the case of breast cancer or breast carcinoma you would not readily notice it until maybe a lump has formed now regular regular checkup with mammography can detect these things even before they are uh, they escalate into something you cannot control because cancer as you know is a very very it grows very fast you get me and as such early detection there's there's, there's this thing you always see in the hospital setting Early detection saves lives, and that's one of the things that have um, cut down mortality rates as, as touching um, breast cancer. Is mammography early detection? Get me. So that is one of the importance of um, of um, of um, radiography. Another importance is that it's it's very important to guide surgeons, like we saw in um, interventional radiography. It is very, very important in guiding surgeons. You can't just get in there, get in there and start doing castration without knowing where you're going. You get me? So that is another importance of um, um, radiography. Like we saw in um, radiotherapy, can also be used for treatments of cancer. And so those tumors that could not be um, treated with chemo, you would have you would use radiotherapy to treat those things. So radiography is 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 a is a very 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 helpful um, profession as touching healthcare as touching health and as such it cannot be overlooked cannot be overemphasized. Radiography is a very interesting profession. Yeah, and suffice to say that we have just been around. Radiography has just been around for about what a hundred years, comparing compared to. Um, nursing science and then um, maybe physicians and uh, medicine medicine science that's been around for over 3,000 years so we are pretty much a new profession in the health sector and as such being as and as being and as per being a new profession we are evolving every day do you get me we are evolving every day so it's a, it's a very interesting profession and I would um, I would admonish you to make the best of it while you study it. All right, that would be all for this lecture. I hope you had an interesting time, and I hope you learned something um, in this lecture. Until we'll see you next time. If you have any questions, maybe an area that was not clear, and you would want us to um, um, make it a lot clearer, maybe in the next video. Um, I think I, I was I was thinking yeah, if we could um if we could um, make instead of answering your questions in the next video and make it make it longer we could just compile your questions and answer it at the end of every week so let us know which you would prefer best in the comment section if this video helps you if you learn something new in this video leave a like leave a comment tell your friends about the channel and until we meet next time.